Hey, I'm Chris, and this is MMA for You. I'm going to be doing my predictions for Invicta FC 19, Maya vs. Motiferi, which happens on September 23rd on UFC Fight Pass. But before I get into that, I'd like to plug my own author's website at www.chrismodong.com. I am an author specializing in the fantasy genre, and you can buy some of my works, starting with my first novel, an action adventure called The Mustard Prince in the Convent Kingdom, for $4.99 on my website at on PDF format, or if you have an e-reader such as a Kindle, you can buy it for $4.99 on Amazon.com. Also, for just $1.99 on my website on Amazon.com, you can buy some of my short stories and short story collections, starting with uh, the fantasy horror short story, The Land of the Wooden Statues, which I'm trying to make into a full novel, uh, The Horror Collection, which is a compilation of three of my gothic horror short stories, and my Fantasy Fable collection, which is a compilation of four of my Fantasy Fable uh, short stories. Uh, links to buy these or check out my website will be provided on the description, along with a link to my Twitter page, a link to my author's page on Facebook, and my author's YouTube page, which is me like reviewing manga and or uh, reading some of my short stories and whatnot. Okay, uh, on to this card. Uh, two title fights. Solid fights, too. Jennifer Maya versus Roxanne Mataferi. Jinny Fry versus Ayaka Hamasaki. Quality fights, uh, respective to the divisions. Uh, we also have Irene Aldana. She's fighting Faith Van Dune, who is moving, uh, cutting down from 145 pounds. Um, Kayleen Medeiros, she's fighting Manjit Kolakar, who I've seen Manjit in, uh, Super Fight League, um, and of course the, uh, I guess you could say North American MMB debut of Tiffany Van Seuss. Uh, apparently she's fought MMA before, I, I didn't know this, I was looking up her, her, uh, her record on the Fight Finder, um, she actually has a one loss by sub, uh, I don't think it's in the US, so, so I think this is like her, what, North American MMA debut, and last time she fought MMA was back in June of 2011. Um, well, so we have some uh, prospects here from Adam White, Julia Jones, she's pretty decent. Uh, she's fighting Stephanie Skinner, who's only 26. Got some featherweight prospects. Amber Librock, or Amber Librock, who uh, is pretty well known for uh, beating Marina Shafir. She's fighting Amy Coleman, who's 2-0, 30 years old. And then some straw weights, uh, Suna, Ronvig, David, David Statir, uh, versus Ashley Greenway. Uh, Suna is, uh, trains out of Mojane, actually, uh, the gym owned by Gunnar Nelson. And Ashley Greenway, she most recently beat, uh, Sir Click, uh, in a very recent, uh, Invicta FC. So... Uh, my expectations for all Invicta FC cards, I expect them to all to be, you know, I pretty much always expect Invicta FC to rise above expectation. Now, my expectations are actually pretty good here, too. I actually see a good amount of finishes or just some pretty good fights. Uh, let's get started. Okay, for the Invicta FC flyweight title, Jennifer Maya fights uh, Roxanne the Hot... Uh, the Happy Warrior, Mataferi. Mataferi, 19 and 12 record, two wins by KRTK, four wins by sub. Uh, or, yeah, four wins by sub. She has three losses by submission. 33 years old. She's 5'6 on a two fight win streak. Trains out of Syndicate. And um, her training out of Syndicate has really shown itself to be uh, quite beneficial. Uh, she has some real veteran savvy now. She is, she's really become the fighter that you do not want to feed prospects to. I mean, you just do not want to feed prospects to Roxanne Mataferi because she'll beat them all. Um, she she's beating Mariana Marias. Um, let's see, uh, Deanna Bennett. And um, Andrea KGB Lee, you know, all prospects. 
and Modifier's beaten them, and has shown some real veteran savvy too, you know. Despite the fact that she's not the most athletic, she's technical, she has strong judo, she's, good. she's actually really good at, uh, she's pretty good at completing takedowns against a cage. Uh, she's very good about passing to dominant positions when she's on top, she has a killer mount, actually. Uh, her Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills are strong, like I said, her guard passing is good. She's good at staying in positions now, she doesn't get reversed very easily. Veteran savvy, along with just strong fundamentals, can do that. And, of course, the what really has shown itself from training out of Syndicate is her boxing. Uh, her stand is improving, she's using a lot of movement, she kind of goes in and out. Uh, she doesn't look particularly lost in the stand-up, or super reckless, I, 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 I guess is the way to say it. Um... Her stand-up is now good. You know, it's just it's solid. She can still she's still susceptible to light kicks. Um, she's not like a defensive wizard or anything like that, or like she's not particularly heavy-handed, but she's good there. She can actually out. She's actually outboxed a good amount of her competition at this point. Jennifer Maya, 13 and 4 record with one draw, four, three wins by KR Tico, five wins by Sub. 27 years old, she's 5-4 on a four-fight win streak. Most recently, beating Vanessa Porto to get the Invicta FC interim flyweight championship. I, I don't really know what's going on yet as far as this title is going, because like Barb Hontak still around and has like the true title, but she hasn't fought in like forever. Uh, Maya trains out of shoot the box. Her stand up's good. She has a good Muay Thai background. Uh, she uses combinations a well, and she's really aggressive. Her takedown defense is solid. Her ability to get back to her, to her feet when she's taken down is good. And her overall takedown defense is good. Her overall grappling actually isn't that bad. This one's tough to call. Uh, you know, in the past, I would have been like, yeah, turn for Maya all day. You know, she just beats her up on the feet. I actually think Jennifer Maya is still going to beat Marta Ferry up on the feet. Uh, I actually am inclined to believe that Marta Ferry should be able to take this fight to the ground. Um, and if that's the case, that changes the dynamic of this fight a lot. Like I said, Maya's takedown defense isn't that bad, though. And her overall grappling game is pretty good. Um... But, like, Mata Ferry's also got the veteran savvy, too, you know? If something's not working for her, she'll, she can go to something else. Um, but, yeah, Jennifer Myatt had one heck of a fight against Vanessa Porto. I think that was actually a women's fight of the year. Uh, real scrappy fight. Managed to, uh, to just kind of outlast Porto, I, I would say. Um... But, yeah, I mean, overall, I, I think Jennifer Maya is going to be the better striker here. Um, uh, better combination pressure. Probably the harder hitter, too. Uh, my thing is, uh, if Mata Ferry, especially if she can get the fight against a cage, uh, that makes the fight really interesting. Because, like I said, I think Mata Ferry might actually be able to take the fight to the ground. Uh, would not surprise me to see Mata Ferry win this fight. I I'm not going to lie. At this point, Mata Ferry is actually pretty good. But she still has lost to Vanessa Porto. I mean, there's some MMA math here. You know, Maya beat Porto. I think Porto has beaten Maya before, though. And then Porto has recently beat Mata Ferry. Mata Ferry is actually beating Porto, though. So it's, really inter it's a really interesting thing going on there um, with these three. Because they've all beaten each other. And then beating each other and, you know, getting revenge and rematches and whatnot. Um, but I think Maya will be able to get the better to stand up, be able to keep the fight standing for the most part. And, um, she'll either get, like, the TK win or the decision win. I'm going to go Jen for Maya to win this one by decision. Next one after that, uh, for the... W Invicta FC Women's Atomweight title, Ayaka Hamasaki fights Jinny Fry. 
Ginny Fry, 5-1 record, 1 win by KO, 2 wins by Sub, 31 years old, she's 5-2, trains out of Molar MMA. She's on a 3-fight win streak, actually beating a uh, former champion uh, most recently, and uh, looking pretty good too. Uh, Fry has some um, strong kickboxing, and she's really heavy-handed. I mean, she's knocked down Jody Esquibel. Of course, she has that highlight reel knockout um, that really put her on the map. Uh, so her stand-up's something that's pretty deadly at times. Uh, her grappling, I'd say it's average. Like, her takedown defense isn't that bad, but I have seen her getting taken down. I mean, she's not particularly great off her back or anything like that. Her cardio is a bit questionable too. I've, for one thing, with Ginny Fry is that um, she's uh, she's missed weight. There we go. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say for a second. She's missed weight before for 105. And then, there's some fights where I've seen her kind of fade down to stretch, too. And those are in three-rounders. I don't know how she's going to fare in a five-rounder. Also, like, if I'm not mistaken, from a lot of interviews I've read, uh, you know, fighting, like, she's, she does, like, she has this one job, and it's, like, she has a full-time job. And then she does fighting. I mean, a lot of fighters do that, but, like, it's it's really surprising that she can even find time to train, which is a, you know, a testament to her, actually. Um, Ayaka Hamasaki, 13-1 and one record, two wins by K.O. Tico, five wins by Sub, 34 years old. She's 5-2 on a four-fight win streak. She's recently beating Amber Bully Brown and a really good, uh, that's one of the best Adam White fights I've seen. I mean, there's a lot of good ones, though. Jessica Panay versus Michelle Watterson, for example. Um, Watterson versus, um, geez, the one where she lost the title against a uh, Brazilian girl. I forgot her name. Ugh, totally forgot her name now. Anyways, um, Hamasaki is the Invicta FC Animate Champion. Uh, she has some strong judo, strong Brazilian jiu-jitsu skills, too. Uh, her top control is really good. She was actually having a great grappling battle against Amber Brown. Uh, she can be something of a grinder, though. Um, just kind of staying on top and just kind of grinding away. Is her stand-up, I'd honestly just say it's below average. I think the thing with Hamasaki is that she kind of strikes to clinch up with her opponent and get that takedown. Uh, Hamasaki has only lost to, um, Claudia Gadalia at 115 pounds. Ginny Fry has only lost to Jody Escobar in a fight she should have won. Um, tough one for me to call, because, like, if, you know, I were to see this fight, it's, Hamasaki's probably going to want to take the fight to the ground. Ginny Fry's going to want to keep the fight standing. Um, the problem with Fry is that she's not exactly high volume, but she hits hard. And then Hamasaki, you know, you know what she wants to do. She wants to take it to the ground. It's just a matter of whether her opponent can stop it or do something on the ground. Um, with that said, though, I, I think that Hamasaki will be able to take this fight to the ground consistently. Uh, stay on top uh, for the most part. I, I'm i actually going to go Ayaka Hamasaki to win this one. Probably by submission to either sub or decision. You know, she can either grind away or uh, get an opportunistic sub. I can see her get the opportunistic sub. So, and also, the, you know, front, uh, Fry doesn't have too many fights. Six fights versus 14. Hamasaki is going to be a lot more experienced as well. Uh, it'd be cool if Jinny Fry won. I'm actually a fan of hers, but, um, yeah, I think, I'll, it just seems like for this division, Hamasaki's skill set at this time is going to be a lot to handle. I think eventually the Adam Waits, I mean, if Hamasaki fights like Jessica Panay or like Michelle Watterson or something, uh, those two can handle themselves really well on the ground, so, I mean, they're, 
but but those who are like now find the UFC at 115, uh, everyone else I don't really see them having that ground ability. Uh, Amber Brown did really well, but she eventually got stopped. So I I'm going to Ayaka Hamasaki to win by submission. Next one of that, at women's bantamweight, Irene Aldana fights the immortal Faith Van Dune. Faith Van Dune, 6-2 uh, record, 1-1 one, one by Tico, 3 wins by sub. She also has 2 losses by KO Tico. 30 years old, she's 5'10", trading wins and losses. Presented just these girls are actually pretty solid. Uh, I'd say her stand-up, though, is just average at best. It's, it's never that good. When she fought Cyborg, I, I figured she just got... She get wrecked, and that's kind of what happened. Um, even when, like, Van Dune fought, um, Amanda Bell, you know, she was getting beat up on the feet. Well, Bell just kind of brawls and goes in there and, like, recklessly ground and pounds her. And then Van Dune got a, uh, submission off her back. Irene Aldana, 6-2 and two record, 4 wins by K.O. Tico, 2 wins by sub. She also has 2 losses by K.O. Tico. 28 years old, she's 5'9", trained out of Lobo Gym with Alexa Grasso. Uh, Aldana's boxing is really strong on a technical level. She's really heavy-handed. Her grappling actually isn't too bad. I mean, obviously, she lost in that title fight. But, you know, and got out-grappled. But at, at this point, I mean... Um... Tanya Avenger is pretty much going to be able to take down every women's bantamweight uh, in the regional scene. I mean, it, it's really going to take uh, some top-level women in the UFC to be able to defend, you know, Tanya Avenger's takedowns or even get their own takedowns. Uh, but that's that's like the only people that. Tony Avenger loses to, uh, for the most part, you know, so, you know, with Irene Aldana, like I said, her graphing, a few times I've seen it, it hasn't looked too bad, except against Tony Avenger, that's where I was kind of going with that, um, with that said, I mean, Aldana has some of the best boxing in her division, it's, on a technical level, she moves well, uh, the fighters I love would, you know, Grasso and her have good head movement. They hit really hard, too. It's pretty accurate. Um, so, yeah, with that said, I'm going to go Aldi uh, Irene Aldana to win this one by KO or TKO. So, right after that, at Women's Straw, Manjit Kolekar fights Kayleen, the Dark Angel Medeiros. Medeiros, 7 and 4 record, 2 wins by KO or TKO. One win by subs, 37 years old, she's 5'3", on a four-fight win streak. You know, I'm really impressed with uh, Kaylee Medeiros, actually, as of late. Her wrestling looks good, her ground and pound solid, and her stand-up, it, it's, it's serviceable, you know? It's not that bad, uh, not that great, I'd say it's just average. Uh, from what I've seen lately from her, her strength really is taking opponents down, pounding them out, or even getting off to, yeah. Or just panning them out. Manjit Kolakar, 9 and out, undefeated record. 4 wins by KO Tico, 3 wins by subs. She's 5 2. So, the only fights I've seen from Manjit, uh, I was actually a fan of the Super Fight League uh, back in India. And uh, so, I've seen actually, I've seen some of her fights, and, and the level of competition there is very, very low. I mean,. There's a lot of catch up here, and I mean, Manjit has been fighting outside of. Uh, it looks like she's been fighting outside of her native India, but like, you know, I just remember her being real sloppy. You know, just stand up sloppy. She's one of the bigger and stronger girls there. Um, so she was actually able to really hurt her opponents. And her grappling is just sloppy. Once again, it's more like strength than technique to actually get fights to ground. She got reversed a couple of times and whatnot. It's just like, I mean, she's like the best of her, I guess, region, you know. Uh, but 
I, I really don't think she's going to get quality training out of uh, out of India I don't, if she's still training there. And like Colleen Madero's, I won't even say she trains. I want to even say like an ATT or like MMA Masters or something like that. Um, could be very wrong, but anyways, uh, I don't see Manjeet being able to. Uh, actually, I see Madero's beating Manjeet everywhere. Uh, I think Manjeet beats her standing, but if Madero just wants to, you know, stick to her like current strengths, see her taking her down and just beating her up. So. Kayleen Maderos by KO or TKO. Next right off that, at Women's Strawweight, Tiffany Timebound Van Seuss fights Kaylin Fitkal Schwartz. Kaylin Schwartz, no pro MMA fights. She's 2 0 as an amateur with both of those wins by decision. She's 5 5. So I actually saw one of her amateur fights. Um, stand up looked pretty wild. Her grappling looked decent at best. Tiffany Van Seuss. So, according to the Fight Finder, uh, she's actually, z she has a 0 and 1 pro MMA record, but that one lost by submission. 27 years old, she's 5'4. Uh, she trains at a black house, among other places too, if I'm not mistaken. And she last fought in MMA back in June of 2011. So, I've seen her fights, I've seen a lot of her fights and line fights. You know, uh, she's obviously a Muay Thai champion. She has really strong body strikes, too. She's really good at uh, striking on the body and has a really strong diversity as well. Her defense is really good. She actually moves her head and has just good defensive instincts. Uh, her ground game is just a big unknown. Apparently, though, she's been training with the likes of, like, Esparza, and some other like top level women, uh, yeah, top level women in MMA on her ground game, and has been doing it for a while, apparently. Uh, with that said, I mean, as much as the ground game is unknown, excuse me, uh, I, you know, unless something crazy happens, I gotta go with Tiffany Van Zeus to win this one by K or TKO. Um, her style of striking looks like it'll translate well into MMA. The fact that she strikes on to the body, uh, you know, she has strong, like, mechanics <laughs> to, like, punching and kicking and knees and whatnot. She has good striking mechanics, whereas Kaylin Schwartz just kind of, th when I saw her fight, just threw kind of wildly. And, um... Yeah, it really is just about her takedown defense and her ground game, you know. And if she's good enough to defend takedowns and or get back to her feet when she's taken down, uh, at 27 years old and having such a strong uh, striking background, she's going to be well ahead. I mean, you would think that she'd be well ahead of the curve, I mean, already. And after UFC signed her, and they gave her some of the lower tier women's straw weights, I mean, we haven't seen her fight yet, but once again, she's going to be ahead of the curve just because of her background and how long she's been fighting at, you know, in different striking arts at such a high level. So anyways, um, going tangent there, Tiffany Van Seuss, KO or TKO. So after that, at Adam Waits, Julia Jules Jones fights Stephanie the Scrapper Skinner. Skinner, four and five record, two wins by K.O. Tico, one win by Sub. She has us three losses by K.O. Tico. Twenty-six years old, she's five four on a two-fight win streak. She last fought in November twenty-fourteen. And one fight, she had uh, Kyra Patara. Actually, I thought she should have totally lost that fight. She was getting taken down all day. She's going for sub attempts, but. For the most part, she's just getting taken down a lot and kept on her back. Her stand-up looks pretty average to me. Her Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills, I mean, obviously she's throwing stuff from her back and whatnot. Um, she has some submission ability. Uh, I actually wants another fight of hers, though. Um, her ground and pound actually looks pretty good, but her takedown defense isn't that great. 
Julia Jones, 4-0 undefeated record, 1 win by sub, 3 wins by decision. 20 years old, she's 5-1, last fought in September of 2015. I was against Granados. I actually watched that fight. Um, but, and what I saw from that fight was, it's pretty good stand-up, you know. Uh, I actually liked, uh, a good amount of that fight was actually playing in the clinch. She actually showed some pretty good clinch knees and elbows. Uh, her striking didn't look too bad. She threw a lot of single kicks. Uh, probably due to her background. Uh, I'm going to assume she has a Muay Thai background. Uh, that's what it looked like at least. And, you know, it didn't look too, it didn't look too bad. I, I haven't seen much of her ground game though. So I can't speak about that. With that said though, um, at least Julia Jones looked a little more, at least standing, looked a little more polished than Stephanie Skinner. Um, interesting enough though, like Julia Jones does have one win by sub and three wins by decision. So, you know, I can, I'd assume that she has something, you know, everyone's got some sort of ground game, you know. Uh, but like I said, Julia Jones looked a little cleaner standing. Can't speak too much about her ground game, but I'll go Julia Jones to win this one. Probably by decision. Next one after that, Amy, uh, uh, Donkey Kong Coleman. Oh, shoot. I've got her, um, uh, is it Donkey Coleman? Oh, I, I wrote it down wrong. Well, Amy Coleman fights Amber Librock. It's Amber Librock, one and one record, one win by KO, one loss by TKO. So she won that one fight, uh, knocked out Marina Shafir in like the first round, in like a minute or so. And then she lost to top featherweight prospect Megan Anderson. Uh, Librock's 20 years old, 5'11. She's pretty tall for the weight class. Uh, her stand up's actually pretty average. She's, you know, pretty heavy handed. Uh, her ground and pound out is obviously pretty good. She actually wasn't doing that bad against Megan Anderson early. But then when Megan was able to like really get her back against the cage, get some knees and stuff in there, uh, you know, then. She knocked out Live Rock, but Live Rock stand up doesn't like that bad, you know, and she looks like she's relatively heavy handed. Amy Coleman, 2 0 record, 1 win by TK, 1 win by decision, 30 years old, she's 5'7. Um, so I want actually two of her fights uh, against Shania. So Shania Young, I think. That was a fun fight, that was an amateur fight. And then I want to actually like her pro debut fight. I actually liked what I saw from her. Uh, one of the commentators commented that she has a judo black belt. She's really good at, uh, if she gets, like, leg kicked, to get grabbed the legs and, like, throwing her opponent down. Uh, she actually is really strong. Uh, her ground and pound looks pretty solid, too. Her stand-up looks improving. She actually has a pretty decent head kick. Um, I mean, yeah, she actually didn't look that bad standing. Uh, with that said, it's really tough to say how this fight's going to go because Amber Leibrock's taller and, you know, it's hard to really divulge or, like, get where Amber Leibrock is because, like, she beat Marina Shafir, which is a good win, but, well, it's a good win over something of a name, you know, but, like, I think we're kind of learning that Marina Shafir isn't as good as advertised, despite her, like, judo background and her ties to Ronda Rousey. Uh, and then she lost to Megan Anderson, who's the top women's featherweight prospect out there. So, it's like, you know, like, where is she at in the spectrum? Because she's fighting, like, at very different ends. She fought two opponents that are very... On two different, very, uh, two very different ends of like the featherweight spectrum. Uh, so I'd say Livebox kind of, still kind of unknown as what she really brings to the table. Uh, Coleman though, like I said, I like what I saw from her. Her being the shorter fighter kind of worries me, but she was, she's really strong. Judo black belt, good ground and pound, improving. You know, stand up actually didn't look that bad. Uh, with that said, I, I'm actually going to go Amy Coleman to win this one. Uh, I'll, I'll go by KO or TKO even. Even a ground and pound finish wouldn't surprise me. So, uh, yeah, I, you know, 
at the very least, I've seen Amy Coleman take opponents down and beat them up. You know, I, I can't really speak much, if anything, about Amber Leibrock's ground game. Uh, so, yeah, Amy, I can assume that Leibrock may be, and with her reach advantage, too, I, I'd assume she's probably better standing, boxing-wise. Tough to say, though, but nonetheless, Amy Coleman, KRTK. And finally, at women's strawweight, Ashley Dollface Greenway fights Suna, Tsunami, Ranveig, David Satir. <laughs> so, uh, Ashley Greenway, 1 0 record. She has one win by decision, 31 years old. She's 5'4. Uh, her first pro MMA fight was against Sarah Click and then Victor FC. She actually had a pretty extensive amateur record. Her stand up, you know, I thought Sarah Click was actually doing pretty well standing. Uh, the thing with Greenway, her stand-up's just alright. She looks really scrappy, though. Like, she's not super technical defensively or offensively, but she seems kind of scrappy. But her grappling is actually pretty solid. There's actually some sequences on the ground where she's getting, like, arm bars and triangles against Sarah Click. Um, even on the regional scene, her, her grappling looked pretty decent. Uh, Suna Ranvig, David Statir, uh, no pro MMA bout. She's 4-1 as an amateur with two, two of those wins by TKO as an amateur and one win by sub. 31 years old, she's 5-3, trains out of Mojanir with the likes of Gunnar Nelson. She's from Iceland. And last fought, uh, amateur in, uh, November 2015. Um, I actually saw that fight, her, la her like, most recent fight. Uh, her stand up looked decent. I mean, honestly, it's gonna be really hard for me to really tell who has the better stand up here. I did like, uh, Suna's offensive takedown ability. It looked pretty good. And she did pass to mount. So, you know, she's training under, like, you know, Gunnar Nelson's gym. I'm gonna assume that her. Her ground game's gonna be pretty good. Uh, you know. So, she managed to take the fight to the ground, pass the mount, and get the ground and pound finish. Uh, you know, this one to me is something like a coin flip, though, because both are really raw. I mean, it's gonna be Greenway's second pro MMA bout, and, uh, Suna's first pro MMA bout. Uh, I don't really know what to expect. I, I can't really say that Greenway looked great against Sarah Click in her last fight. But she got the win. She has the experience. You know, she's fought the whole 15 minutes. Uh, which Suna cannot say. You know, as far as a record goes. And, you know, Ashley's also fun in Invicta. Whereas, like, Suna has not. I don't even know if Suna has actually fought outside of, like, or has fought in North America yet. I, I, I honestly just don't know. Um, as far as the, the uh, skill-wise goes, I kind of like Suna's game a little better. I thought standing, she didn't look great. But, like, Greenway honestly didn't look that great either when she fought her click. On, on the ground, I kind of like Suna's game a little better, you know? So, with that said, I'm going to go Suna to win this one. Suna Ranvig, David Zatir to win this one. Heck, you know, I'll go by sub. Um, this one's tough for me to call, though. Uh, you know, even just watching video of them, I mean, they're both still raw. Like, I, you know, I, I can't really, you know, like, I don't know what to expect from these two coming into the next fight. Okay, to recap, uh, I have uh, Jennifer Maya beating Roxanne Mataferi by decision. Ayaka Hamasaki beating Ginny Fry. She, I think I've said submission. Irene Aldana over Faith Van Dune by K.O. Tico. Kayleen Medeiros over Manji Kalikar by K.O. Tico. Tiffany Van Seuss beating Kaylin Schwartz by K.O. Tico. Julia Jones over Stephanie Skinner by decision. Amy Coleman over Amber Leibrock by KRTKO. 
and Cena, Ron Vig, David Satir beating Ashley Greenway by submission. So, that's pretty much it for my predictions for Invicta FC 19, Maya vs. Mataferi. If you have any comments, just leave them below. And please check out my website at www.chrismaldon.com. You can buy some of my works, starting with my first novel, The Mustard Prince in the Convent Kingdom, for $4.99 uh, on my website on Amazon.com. And for just $1.99, on my website on Amazon.com, you can buy some of my short stories and short story collections, starting with The Land of the Wooden Statues, uh, the Horror Collection, and the Fantasy Fable Collection. Links to buy these or check out my website will be provi provided on, my, on the description, and a link to my Twitter page, a link to uh, my author's Facebook page. And a link to my author's YouTube page will also be provided on the description. So that's pretty much it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.